I'm going to pose a, an argument to you about whether our tests are practical. So in the A&P written exam for an aircraft mechanic, here's the first question. My question to you is, is this practical knowledge? Why is ethylene dibromide added to aviation gasoline? A, to scavenge lead oxide from the cylinder combustion chambers. B, to increase the anti-knock rating of the fuel or C, to remove zinc silicate deposits from the spark plugs. Now, do you think that has a practical application for an aircraft mechanic? Maybe it does. How much time do we want to spend learning that? Let me pose another question to you. The color of 100 low lead fuel is A, blue, B, red, C, colorless or straw. Now, would an aircraft mechanic need to know that? I hope so. I hope an aircraft mechanic doesn't put jet fuel into a reciprocating engine. That said, if you had to go back and take the FAA written exams that you took years ago, could you pass them? But to be honest, ask everybody else. Ask a and P's you know. Ask other pilots. If you had to go back and take your written exams, could you pass them? What is our current system? Our current system of learning to pass the FAA written is to memorize the questions. Let's be honest. I mean, that's what we're doing. There is a class that you take at the end of A&P school where you spend the entire semester taking practice tests over and over again, the, and the instructor explains how to pass them. If you're taking your flying writtens, it's the same thing, let's be honest. What everybody has to do is you have to memorize the test questions, because otherwise you can't pass them. Now this is insane. I, I, everybody, everybody knows this in aviation, but it's, it's the normal state is what we have. So how did we get here? Well, the way we got here was a lot of this stuff, especially the A&P written stuff, all came from 1940. The textbook in 1940 was written by Brim and Bodges, and you can still find them around. And this textbook was where we built everything where we're at today. These writtens were, were written in a day before the FAA even existed, and we've just built over the course of time on these questions. The FAA has a modern day book, which was written in 2008, which is the FAA H8083. Now this book was primarily written for aviation instructors and it's a fantastic book. In the beginning they talk about cognitive theory and they talk about teaching adult learners and all kinds of modern learning methods. They talk about people like John Dewey. They also talk about people like Benjamin Bloom. And these are all modern day, these were the guys that built the foundations for modern day adult education. There's another document besides this FAA H8083-9, which is the Air Force uh, document that's called Instructional System Design. And this document is used by a lot of civilian and military people for writing curriculum. Straight out of the FAA H8083, Section 5.8 talks about criterion-based objectives. And what criterion-based objectives are Here's what an a and mechanic needs to know. He needs to know how to take an engine apart. He needs to know how to time a magneto. And your written questions would be based on those objectives. The other thing is the FAA has established these levels of education, uh, these levels of learning that we have to have in uh, the regulation. So in the regulation it takes a topic like magnetos and it says what level of performance the student needs to achieve when they finish their training. And that should be what we're testing against is can this guy time a mag? Okay, does he can the student name the material that the rotor was made out of and the speed at which the rotor rotates internally in the mag from a gear driven assembly? No, it's not important. But can the guy put a magneto on my Piper Warrior and make the thing run? that is important. So once once again these questions are go way back. It's not anybody's fault. The people who are running the FAA question database, they inherited this system back from the guys who inherited it from the guys who inherited it from the Brim and Bodges days. That said, I I hope that we can put some resources in this day of of an age of FAA resources and and this unmanned aerial vehicle thing that's coming and it's going to suck a lot of the resources out of the FAA. I don't know how we're going to get it, 
But what I can say is what we're doing right now is insanity. It's not working. And hopefully we can get some resources put onto our assessments based on criterion-based objectives. This is a big dream of mine, and who knows? I hope that someday we can get there. Thanks for watching.